Now we've had a good couple of weeks with this Galaxy Book 2 Pro. So tonight we're gonna to do a full review on this laptop. Now we've already done an unboxing and first impressions, but having spent two weeks with this laptop, it's grown on me more and more, and I've been really impressed with this device. So in case you missed the unboxing and first impressions, I've bought the base model of the 13 inch Galaxy Book 2 Pro. This comes with a new Intel 12th gen CPU, eight gigabytes of RAM, and a 256 gig SSD. And most importantly, this beautiful 1080p AMOLED panel. So before we start talking about the specs and you know the performance of this laptop, I wanna talk about one of the most important things I think with something like this, and that is the size and the weight. Having used this now for two weeks, I still can't get over how light and small this is for the power that it packs. It honestly feels like I'm picking up one of my iPad Pros to throw in my bag rather than a fully fledged laptop. And it is so slim and so light, it's just easy to pick up and cart around with one hand. I kind of feel like I'm back in the days when I had the MacBook 12 inch and I used to take that everywhere with me. This is sort of filling that role. Now, even though this is incredibly light and incredibly small, we've still got a great selection of ports. On one side, we've got a full size HDMI port and two Thunderbolt ports. And you've also got a little light that shows you when you're charging. And on the other side, we've got a headset jack a full size USB type A port and a micro SD card slot. So you've got a great all round section of ports on a tiny little laptop like this. So this be like a great laptop, say for instance, you're going out on a photo shoot and you wanna quickly transfer your photos onto the laptop. I know it's only a micro SD card slots, but it'll certainly get you by if you wanna be transferring things out and about in the field very quickly. And the fact that it's got a full size HDMI and USB type A, you're not gonna be fumbling around for dongles all the time like you are with say a MacBook. Now also on this laptop, being that it is the base model. It only comes with a 256 gig SSD, but that can be upgraded. It's got a full size 80 millimeter slot. But the only pain with this laptop is you cannot see the screws on the bottom. You've got to unpop these feet, which are stuck on, and the screws are under there. So it is a bit of a pain to upgrade, but it's totally possible. Now the RAM is soldered. So the only thing you will be able to upgrade is that SSD. Now opening up the laptop is an easy one hand affair. The hinge is incredibly smooth. It opens and glides nicely open, yet it doesn't wobble around when you're using it on your lap. And that's something that obviously shows it's a well-engineered hinge. And we've also got a fingerprint sensor in the power button. So although it hasn't got a Windows IR webcam, which I do prefer, the fingerprint reader is very accurate and logs you in very quickly. So it hasn't bothered me that I haven't got that IR face recognition. And one of the things that I've absolutely enjoyed and loved about this laptop over the two weeks of using it is just how well everything works on the actual deck of this laptop. I love the white finish. I don't know how well it's gonna hold up over a year or two of use, whether it's gonna get dirty or grubby, but it looks great as of two weeks worth of use. The touchpad is a white glass touchpad. It feels amazing, tracks brilliantly. And the white keyboard, not only is it really easy to see all the keys, and the backlight still shines up, and you can see the backlight through these keys, which is something I was worried about with a white backlight with these white keys it does actually work still, making it a great all-round package for using it day to day as a daily use laptop. Now the keyboard layout is also great and the tactile response to these keys are brilliant, making it a lovely typing experience. Making it a great laptop for somebody who wants to take this away and do a lot of writing or work on the go. As we showed in our unboxing video, the speakers are very average. It's such a tiny laptop, I didn't expect a lot else. But when you compare it to something like a MacBook Pro 13, which still has amazing speakers, I was somewhat disappointed. They get you by in a pinch and you know, wearing a headset and everything works perfectly, but don't expect to be impressing your friends playing music or a movie on this laptop between a few of you. They're just not that great. Now moving up to the screen, this is honestly one of the stars of the show on this laptop. And that's this 13 inch AMOLED display. Now, yes, it's only 1080p, but I think 1080p on a 13 inch laptop is the absolute sweet spot. You don't need to set the scaling too high. Everything still looks incredibly crisp and great. And it still retains you a lot of battery life that you don't get often with a 4K panel. The screen is vibrant, it's bright, it looks beautiful, and it also feels very snappy being an AMOLED panel. And it's been one of the highlights for the last two weeks of me using this for work and for content consumption on this machine. Now, even though it's glossy, unfortunately it's not a touchscreen. If you do want this version in a touchscreen, you're gonna to need to buy the Gatsby Book 2 Pro 360 version, which has got the 360 hinge and also comes with a pen. And above the screen, we've got a, a, just a standard webcam and it looks like this. And this is what the webcam and the microphones look and sound like on the Galaxy Book 2 Pro laptop. So overall, this is a lovely package. Really light, really premium, 
and it feels great to use as a sort of everyday laptop. But what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take a quick look at the performance. And we're gonna start by looking at the CPU performance on this machine. Now this is one of the new 12th generation low voltage processors. And this is the first time we've tested one of these. And I have to say, CPU wise, the performance has been fantastic. Testing against my previous favorite Intel Ultrabook, the Surface Pro 8, which did perform very well for that 11th gen CPU it had in it. This has 40% more CPU performance in the multi-core side of things. The single core is only slightly better than 11th generation, but it still felt incredibly snappy and more snappy than the Surface Pro 8. And that machine was very impressive when I got that in for testing. But my biggest disappointment is the fact that we've still got the same Iris graphics that we had on the previous 11th gen processors. I was really hoping we'd get the new Arc graphics with this Intel processor. Now I haven't been fully up to date with the Intel processors recently, so I wasn't sure what I was gonna get when this turned up, but it is exactly the same as the Iris in the Surface Pro 8, and they even score almost identically. So if you're looking for something for improved 3D performance over 11th generation, you're gonna be disappointed here. Now don't get me wrong, the Iris isn't a bad graphics card. You can play some light eSport titles. You can do some light 3D modeling and you know 3D rendering, very light. But you're not gonna to wanna to buy sort of the laptop like this for heavy 3D graphics, for heavy gaming, or even video editing. All of those things utilize a decent GPU and the Iris graphics is not that GPU. Now bearing in mind how thin and light this laptop is, you're probably not gonna be expecting to be doing AAA gaming on it. So fair enough there. And for an everyday laptop, it does cope with all the tasks I've thrown at it. But I wouldn't be buying this to be doing any of my video editing on, it just would not cope with it. And that's something that's a real shame. Especially when you get something like a MacBook Pro 13 with Apple Silicon that can cut through video editing and still be a good all-round laptop. Now hopefully when Intel do release their ARC graphics onto these low-profile chips, or when we get into some of the new Ryzen 6000 with RDNA graphics, we'll start seeing a good boost to ultra performance in the graphics department. But until that time, this is the best we're gonna get. But another good thing with these laptops, the performance on battery is top notch and feels almost like you're on mains. And that's something that's really important when you're using a laptop away from your outlet. And with regards to battery life, this was also quite impressive as well. There are plenty of options within both the Samsung Command Center and the Windows Power Options that you can adjust your battery uh, performance so that you can obviously get better battery life or better performance on the go. But if you're putting it down to best battery saver and you're watching movies, you can expect a good 10 plus hours. In our usual battery testing of setting the screen to 200 nits and streaming YouTube videos over Wi-Fi with speakers at 50%, we managed to get 11 hours and 10 minutes. That's really quite impressive for something as small as this. So overall, this has been an absolutely solid package. And as well, being a USB-C charging, not only can you use the tiny compact USB-C charger it comes with, you can plug this into your USB-C display or a power bank or another USB-C charger, and you'll be back up and running again with this machine. It truly is a great daily use laptop. Now, another great feature of buying a Galaxy Book Pro over maybe another Ultrabook is the fact that you move to the Samsung ecosystem as well. Now, if you've ever owned Apple devices and you've loved the Apple ecosystem, and I'm one of those people, I love the fact that on my Apple device, I've got my Apple Watch, my Apple phone, and my Apple Mac, and they all work seamlessly together. Now Samsung have been working on the same sort of features for a while now and it's really starting to come together. So recently got the S22 to start testing that as a daily driver phone. And I've also just put myself up a Galaxy Tab S8, which I will be doing a video on very soon. And all of these devices work together just like Apple do. I can take phone calls on the laptop. I can send messages from the laptop. I can extend my screen to the actual Galaxy and have that second screen and even use the pen from the Galaxy Tab to like control that second screen. And I can even move files from the phone to the laptop or to the laptop of the phone, just like you would with AirDrop from Apple. Overall, it's made it a very seamless experience. So if you're currently a Samsung Galaxy user or you got a tablet, buying this laptop makes a lot of sense, just like it would if you're an Apple user with a Mac and an iPhone. And I've been very impressed with my experience with this so far. So let's move on to the conclusion. And who is this machine for? Well, the CPU performance is very impressive, especially for the size of these laptops. And it's just a shame that they couldn't push the graphics as far forward as they had with the CPU. So CPU wise, it's quite a step up from 11th gen and before, but graphic wise, we're talking exactly the same. So yes, it's a snappy everyday laptop that's gonna be great for word processing, content consumption, maybe a bit of Photoshop or 3D modeling, but don't expect to be doing any AAA gaming, or video editing on this machine. It's just really not up to it. But as actually an overall package for a laptop that you can chuck in your bag, 
And you say you take away to do that Photoshop or some workout on the go, sit in a coffee shop, update some documents. This machine is absolutely fantastic with its great battery life, absolutely incredible screen, and still retains some ports considering how small and light this machine is. This is an absolute winner in my book. And this is the sort of machine that I would personally buy because I do like a very light machine that I take everywhere. If I'm gonna be doing something heavy like video editing, I'm probably doing that at home on a more powerful machine with a bigger screen anyway. So very often when I'm out and about just answering emails, updating spreadsheets and documents or writing scripts, this is an absolute perfect laptop. So I could well be keeping this one. So what did you think of this machine? Do you think this is worth a buy for an everyday laptop? Should you get the MacBook Pro 13 for that Apple Silicon? And are these 12th gens worth the hype? And lastly, thanks for watching.